This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'm finally sharing with you how to paint photorealistically and procreate. What you see on the screen is exactly what we're going to be doing together. I promise you do not need to be an artist whatsoever to accomplish this. It's almost like cheating in a way with how simple it is, but something like this will help build your confidence as an artist and help you understand a lot about choosing and manipulating colors to achieve this art style and just a better understanding of color in general. All you need for this tutorial is your iPad, Apple Pencil, and Procreate. This tutorial only uses one brush and I'm going to give it to you for free. It's from my Good Gouache brush set and I actually share the process for making these, but I'll share a default Procreate brush you can use for the same look. All right, so first, Pinterest. Drawing and painting florals is my favorite thing ever. I've done a ton of floral and botanical pieces. I built out this entire board all about arrangements and compositions that I use for practice. Not everything on Pinterest is copyright or royalty free. What I'm showing you is merely for our own personal benefit and fun. If you ever do want to sell something you're creating when using a reference, use places like Unsplash or Pexels. After I've chosen my image, I'll have this board linked below by the way, I'm going to save it to my camera roll. All right, so heading to Procreate, you can do any canvas size you want. Just start big because it's easier to size down than up. I'm going to use a 3000 by 3000 pixel canvas size with a P3 color space. And then you'll hit the wrench icon to insert the photo that we saved. And then with my photo in place, all I'm going to do is just resize it so it fills the entire canvas. All right, so depending on the photo you choose, you may want to edit some of the settings to make it clearer or more visible. Under the magic wand tool, there are things like color balance, hue, saturation, and brightness. Clicking any of these, you'll get sliders at the bottom to make those changes. Play around with these to see what you like. Just keep in mind things like this will change the color of certain petals and features in your photo, which will come into play later when we are pulling colors from our image. This is definitely not a necessary step, but a helpful one if you do want to adjust the photo a bit. Keeping things neat, I'm going to rename our picture layer as reference and then create a new layer by pressing the plus icon. So the brush we are using in this tutorial is from my Good Gouache brush set and it's the Good Gouache Opaque brush. It's a nice opaque brush that has almost a creamy texture to it, creamy edges, and it's perfect for blending, which you'll see in a second is super important. If you want to use the default brushes from Procreate, Spectra under the painting category seems to be the most similar one I could find to the Good Gouache Opaque brush. All right, so now on our second layer, it's important to take a look at your photo and kind of break it down in shapes in your mind. With traditional painting, you have to be conscious of things like overlapping paints. We wanna paint our back most things first and so on. So I'm going to start with the stems and all I'm going to do is long press on the screen to pull up the circle, which is our eyedropper tool. And it allows us to pick up colors from the canvas. And I'm just going to use the brush to color that section in you can lower the opacity of any layer by clicking on it and dragging the slider down. But if you do that on the reference layer, you want to do that after picking up colors from your canvas. And then I'm just going to repeat that process, picking up colors from the stem and color blocking those in. It may look super weird now, but hold on with me for a minute. I'm going to repeat that entire process for these stems.
Now I'm going to smudge the work that we did. If you long press on the finger tool in our right corner here in Procreate, it will automatically switch the smudge tool to the current brush you're using. So good opaque or spectra. And then I'm just going to smudge and blend those colors together from my stems. Once I have them pretty good and blended, I'm going to turn off my reference layer to clean up around the edges. Not necessary if you like the more smudged look, but I am just going around the edges with an eraser to tidy it up. It doesn't look like much now, but when we do the flowers, it'll be totally killer. Renamed the stem layers branches, must have had a brain fart. Anyway, I kid you not, that's the entire tutorial. You will repeat for every part of the picture or photograph. I'll create a new layer for one of the flowers, starting with the backmost flower and the backmost petals on that flower. And I'm just going to repeat the process with the same exact brush long press to pick up the color and color block it in. If it's difficult for you to paint on a picture like this, lower the opacity of the image again after you have selected the color and pick up as many colors as you can for a more realistic look. When we see an entire image together, our eyes are like, yeah, all those colors work. It's all just pink or whatever. But in reality, there's some mixture of colors we don't really see until we start breaking down the colors and color blocking them in. And this color blocking thing is an art style all in itself too. You don't have to blend it if you like this look. So it's basically two art styles in one. You want to make sure that every color blocking section of an image that you turn off the reference layer because you'll want to see some of the white spots that you might have missed and you want to make sure you're smudging those out or adding more color with the brush. Either works. And when smudging, while it wasn't very important for these small stems, it's most important for these petals. You want to smudge in the direction of the petal. If a petal curves, when you smudge, you should be curving. Notice how I'm not smudging the colors together horizontally, I am smudging in the direction of the petal.
And then to keep things tidy, I'll name it flower one. Now I did that entire flower on one layer, but it's easier to mess things up when smudging that way since the petals do go in different directions. It might be even easier to do a petal per layer and merge all of those layers for that one flower at the very end. And I'll share how to do that in the rest of this tutorial. But new layer, new petal, and do it all over again. Depending on how intricate of a picture you choose, it'll be a bit tedious, but this whole piece took me just under an hour and 20 minutes. So the basic steps, pick a color, paint and color block those colors in, smudge, turn off the layer to check for missed spots, and tidy up the edges if you want. Super simple. And we're doing that over and over again until the entire piece is done. When it comes to things like smudging areas where the colors are darker because of shadows, we want to be careful not to smudge it out too much because we want areas like that to retain that for the realism. Real life has shadows and we want to make sure it's retained even in our rendition of it. And since I did it petal by petal afterwards, you can just pinch to merge all of those layers together for that one flower. I've done a few pieces like this and it teaches me so much about color each time. I'm always surprised by what the eyedropper picks up from the image, like wow, I didn't know there was red in there or something like that. And then once it's all blended out, yeah, you're just really able to appreciate the different hues and the color values that go into pieces like this to achieve a realistic style. It's such great practice and a great lesson in the importance of color when approaching an art style or project, digital or traditional paints as well. You know, for that more realistic style, steer away from true black or true white. It's actually a lot of deep blue or champagne or light pink undertones for colors like that. And it isn't until we've had a bit of practice breaking down color in common images or scenes like this that we realize and learn that.
All right, so now that we are done with our last flower, I want to have a really cool background or something. And honestly, I'm just experimenting here to find something I like for this. So I ended up going with a teal color, looks great against the pink, and then a brush stamp from the Good Gouache set, and I enlarged it. If you tap on any layer, you can actually see the blend modes for that layer, which I really like experimenting with. For that layer, I ended up going with Multiply. And that's our final realistic piece. We really played with color in this video to kind of cheat our way to realism, and I really didn't understand the value of color until I took Charlie Clement's class. Fun with Colors, five exercises for picking unique color palettes on Skillshare. Skillshare is today's video sponsor and I just love them so much. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of curious and creative people with industry leading and successful freelancers who have really built out engaging and immersive classes that focus on a specific skill or class project. It's nice also having that community element because having a community is so important for personal growth and accountability. Skillshare covers classes beyond that of Procreate. There are classes on photography, piano, mental health and self-care journaling, productivity, and with new classes constantly being added, there's no shortage of creativity. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. It's a great opportunity to learn something new or just get a new creative burst for something you're already practicing. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget that I'll have links to Skillshare and the Procreate brush and Pinterest board that we used in today's tutorial. And tag me on Instagram at kdigitalstudio if you end up creating something really rad using this tutorial.